Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. And good evening to you. First in the news, a head-on collision at Lauderdale left one woman dead and a man injured last night. Police are still investigating the cause of the crash, which shut down a major highway for five hours. On a dark causeway south of Lauderdale, police floodlights reveal a horrific scene. Debris from two cars scattered along South Arm Road after they collided head-on at around 8.30 last night. Two vehicles uh, were travelling on the South Arm Highway, uh, south of Lauderdale, uh, when a white Mitsubishi uh, collided with a blue Volvo. Tragically, an 83-year-old lady uh, lost her life in the accident. Those who witnessed the crash rushed to her aid, but she died at the scene. I thank those bystanders that assisted uh, both uh, drivers in this tragic circumstance. A second car coming to rest in shallow water, and the driver, a man in his 40s local to the area, was taken to hospital in a stable condition. The road remained closed for around five hours with local traffic unable to pass through. Authorities guiding cars through surrounding paddocks to help people get home. I understand it was a difficult diversion. Uh, because there's water either side of the road, uh, the diversion uh, had to be done using some private land. Police investigators remained on the scene throughout the day as they worked to determine the cause of the crash, closing the narrow stretch of road at times, causing further delays to traffic in the area. The investigation will take its course and uh, depending on uh, the evidence available uh, may take uh, some weeks to determine uh, the likely cause. Police say it's not the first time they've seen crashes in the area in recent years. I am aware of uh, a number of accidents that have occurred on that section of road uh, over the past years. Last night's crash brings Tasmania's road toll to 32, a jump on recent years. And it's a statistic emergency services desperately hope won't rise any further. Meg Sides, 7 Tasmania News. Federal police have charged a man over child exploitation offences after a raid at Chickwell this morning. The 43-year-old will face court for allegedly accessing and possessing child abuse material. Police also allege the man had been uploading and sharing material on social media and blogging sites. Anyone with information about child abuse or exploitation is urged to call Crime Stoppers. In other police matters, a boat has been seized and three people charged after a lengthy investigation into unlawful rock lobster fishing. It's alleged the men were fishing inside marine reserves, misreporting catches and unlawfully selling them. Police say the offences came at a significant cost to the fishery reserves. Three men aged 26, 29 and 52 are all expected to face court in February. Well, one of Tasmania's biggest strawberry farms remains optimistic all fruit will be picked this year, despite a gaping overseas workforce hole. The state government says it's willing to accept some of the 22,000 international workers given the green light in a Pacific Islands travel bubble. The fruit is ripe, but these workers are green. Today is one of their first days in the fields. How's the strawberry picking going? Yeah, not too bad. Horticulture giant Costa recruiting 69 Tasmanians this week for its strawberry farm. Another 50 will pull on the gloves next week. We've had a, a strong response uh, of, of 400 applicants. A small win in a huge battle to fill a void left by thousands of Pacific Island workers forced onto the mainland during COVID-19. Statewide, a total of 9,000 fruit pickers are needed during the peak season in January. I can't understate the, the size of the challenge that we've, we've, as an industry, faced. There are jobs there now and there will be more jobs in the months ahead. The state government is confident the sector can make it through the season relatively unscathed. The Fruit Growers Association, however, not as optimistic. This farm produces around 2,000 tonnes of strawberries every year, but it, along with other growers, are concerned fruit could be left unpicked unless we fly in new Pacific Island workers. There's more work still to do in terms of Pacific labour. A concern heard from the federal government, signing off on 22,000 Pacific workers vetted and ready to take their pick of Australia's harvest states. The Tasmanian government has confirmed it's ready to accept them, subject to quarantine requirements. 
So we've got a whole a plan for uh, the many months ahead over the summer and into autumn next year. Meanwhile, Costa says it's introduced new measures to ensure there's no repeat of the events earlier this year where 70 overseas workers were crammed into a house in La Trobe. Spot checks and audits are now on its radar, but the labour hire company in question is still on the books. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. The fight over Tasmania's COVID hardship grants has dragged on for another day. Labor continues to demand the state government disclose which businesses shared in the $26 million fund. The mental health minister is refusing to budge on the issue. The advice from state growth is that uh, releasing uh, the names of the grant recipients uh, would have an impact on uh, many people's uh, mental health and cause undue stress. There's no shame in any Tasmanian business seeking support during a pandemic. There are so many businesses who've done it incredibly tough and we supported those grants going out to support those small businesses to keep their doors open. Tourism groups say making the list public could be harmful for some operators. And Launceston's COVID-19 drive-through clinic is on the move to a new location. Tests will be done on Wellington Street with the Inveresk site now closed. Public Health says there is no change to the booking system. It comes days after a warning from authorities that testing numbers have dropped. Anyone with cold or flu symptoms is strongly encouraged to get tested. New polling shows locals are supporting the state's battling tourism industry. More than half of Tasmanians are going on holidays at home carrying battling operators through a turbulent year. Empty hotels set to soon spark to life. It's been a really, really difficult seven or eight months for, for those who've been in tourism, but finally there's some light at the end of the tunnel. Mainland travellers will start to fill this lobby at Hobart's Mac 1, thanks to borders opening. We took a decision as a company that it would be a good idea to uh, run regular uh, pulse surveys with the Tasmanian population to see how they were feeling, what they were concerned about with regard to COVID-19 and importantly how they intended to respond and behave. The EMRS poll found that two thirds support the move, set to save the state's tourism industry. It also found 51% of Tasmanians are taking or booking trips within the state. That's really good news and uh, yeah, that's why uh, our industry is, is able to continue to get some trade during these really difficult times. Oh, well, there's no doubt if the Tasmanians hadn't um, got out and done what they've done the last few months we would have seen more businesses in severe distress. Now attempting to attract mainland visitors, tourism operators are discussing plans for the future. All the immediate issues around restoring our visitor activity and um, obviously getting our events program back up and track and getting airline access into the state. The annual industry conference held today, featuring some outside-the-box ideas. Things like growing Tasmania's potential as an agritourism destination, um, becoming a uh, plastic-free tourism industry. I think agritourism is, uh, is a wonderful opportunity for Tasmania in particular, uh, and, and the far northwest where I come from, uh, uh, we've got a real opportunity to be, to be strong in, the, in this area. Recovery plans, the hot topic of the day. I, I'm starting to become more confident now, actually. I'm certainly optimistic about about uh, the next four, five, six months, and, and I, I, I think we might have the best winter that we've ever had next year. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanian casino identity David Logie has died. Born in Scotland, Mr Logie moved to Tasmania in 1973 to work at the newly opened Rest Point. He would be named casino manager at the Country Club Casino from its opening in 1982, before being promoted to general manager a decade later. He served in that role before moving to Bishano, joining the East Coast Tourism Board and serving as a president of the local golf club. He was 73. A Tasmanian High School's lengthy renovations are now complete. Students at Riverside High will have access to new or refurbished classrooms, while the school is now centred around a social hub area.
Uh, I think I heard one of the students say the other day they've got something that they didn't realise how much they needed. It's a, it's a great way to bring uh, students together and uh, really enhance those social skills and support student, you know, those respectful relationships and positive interaction. Most importantly, the students uh, for many decades to come can now learn in contemporary uh, modern facilities and that's what it's all about. The $13 million redevelopment was due to be completed earlier this year but faced several construction delays. The Mount Wellington cable car saga is taking another turn with the developers pushing the case before the planning tribunal. The Cableway Company is claiming the Hobart City Council breached planning laws after it sought further information on the build's impact on Aboriginal heritage sites. The council says it's now a matter for the tribunal. Seven friends will be picking up the calculator after scoring a $1.6 million Tats Lotto win. The syndicate of mates snatched up the Division I prize from a Lindisfarne newsagent. Lucky two for the owners who've seen a bump in business. It has. It has today especially. Which is really good as people that don't normally come here have been coming here. While the group is remaining anonymous, one of the winners says she plans to use the winnings to buy a garden shed. The North West Thunder has announced its new coach, heading into the most uncertain season on record. Former player Nick Haywood replaces Sam Armstrong at the helm, promising to work in tandem with the new Jack Jumpers outfit. Nick Haywood has seen just about everything coastal basketball has to offer. His playing career spanned nearly 400 games in the Siebel, plus a further 400 in the North West Basketball Union. Now he's ascended from the Thunder's assistant coach to the top job. I want the guys to play with a fair bit of bravery and have some ownership of what goes on um, and be super proud of representing this club. With such a lengthy resume in the region, it's no surprise Haywood wants to build a club culture putting the coast first. A good attitude considering he may need to rely on local players more than ever, with no guarantee overseas imports will be able to play next season. I've had contact with yeah, over a dozen players that are really keen to get on the floor and get going. Good local crew. They've got to want to play though and to, got to want to buy in. I'm not just going to ask any local player to come on board, so they've got to be passionate about the club. And for the first time since the Devils in the 80s and 90s, the Thunder will be working alongside an NBL team above, the rapidly growing Jack Jumpers, which today surpassed 2,000 Foundation members. It's definitely a stepping stone. At the same stage, we're all representing Tasmania, so I think we will do the best to represent the North West, and the guys that want to have that opportunity, they'll be given um, yeah, plenty of opportunity here. And then if they get seen and invited to some jack jump sessions, then so be it. And if the NBL1 season doesn't happen for a second year running, the club says it'll consider all other options, including playing in a state-based competition. We'd obviously look at all sorts of options, but realistically, uh, Victoria makes the most sense. Meanwhile, Hobart's Hugh Greenwood says he's keen to be a part of the Jack Jumpers after his AFL career. I've made it known that I want to be involved in some capacity, whether that's playing or coaching or um, as part of the Jack Jumpers. That's the plan long term, so doing as much as I can to, to keep that foot in the door and it's exciting for Tassie basketball. Greenwood is keeping fit during the Gold Coast soft season by training with the Brisbane Bullets. La Trobe has drawn barrier 10 in the Melbourne Cup National Sweep, which sees 24 destinations around the country allocated a barrier for the big race. La Trobe Mayor Peter Freshney selected T for Tasmania when his turn arrived. If the horse which draws barrier 10 on Saturday goes on to win the race, $50,000 will be donated to La Trobe's chosen charity, the Cancer Research Foundation. The Kingbury Lions have sealed third place in the Women's Super League after coming back from two goals down to clinch a draw against the Clarence Zebras. Ali Berry and Zoe Nichols slotted goals within the first 20 minutes to have the Zebras in control, but a return volley from Laura Davis, followed by an Amy Ollington equaliser after the half-time break, saw the side split the points. One game remains in the season. Good evening, Bushy Park, Campania and Launceston now top today with 20 degrees, Hobart 17, Burnie 15, Devonport a high of 16, temperatures generally above average, Grove and Friendly Beaches 19, the Bass Strait Islands 17 degrees, Low Heads and Helens and Strawn 16, Lyawini 11. The western half of the state with scattered mid to low level cloud, a little bit over the remaining parts as well. More cloud reached over Victoria and South Australia, thunderstorms developed this afternoon over the southeastern parts of Queensland, a patch of cumulus over the top 
top end. Tomorrow, a high-pressure ridge extends our way. A low tracks over New South Wales linked to a front and a few troughs. Winds east to southeasterly up to 15 knots. They'll tend southwesterly over the south later before increasing. Swells at two and a half metres. Hobart expecting 18 with a shower or two developing. Same for Huonville, but 19 degrees. 19 the top for Campania with a shower on the way. 20 the high for Launceston, a shower developing. Partly cloudy for Devonport, a bit cooler on 17. 19 the high for Georgetown. Burnie, a top of 17 and partly cloudy. Strawn, 18 degrees and 17 for Wynyard. And for St Helens tomorrow, 17 the top with a shower developing. A possible shower for Swansea, 17 as well. And 18 the high for Port Arthur. Now the sun up at 6am with the UV peaking tomorrow at a high 7. On Saturday a shower clearing the north but developing over the east. Partly cloudy weather on Sunday, still the chance of a shower over the east. And on Monday morning fog patches followed by a fine partly cloudy day. A warm partly cloudy day for Perth, a shower or two in Adelaide along with Melbourne and Sydney. Also a possible storm for Canberra and a sunny 31 for Brisbane. Fair bit of cloud over Hobart, it's currently 15 degrees, partly cloudy in Launceston, 16 the current temperature and it's sunny over Devonport and currently it's 14 degrees. The swells around our coastline tomorrow over the west and south will be 2.5 metres, Kim. Uh, not like those swells that Tom predicted for that, uh, that uh, surfing event off Portugal tomorrow of 24 metre swells. Those waves are, are the size of an eight storey building, which of course we don't see built here in Tasmania. Putting it in context, if you wipe out of one of those eight-storey building waves, you'll probably need a parachute. <laughs> Very true. Thank you so much, Murph. And that is all your news for now. I'll be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us this evening. That's all for now. Good night.